I go with my topic. Today, I'm going to discuss inert periodic fact. We know that in the periodic table, various elements are arranged according to their chemical properties in the various groups. If we talk about the group 13 to 16, then we will find that the in case of uh, heavier elements of group 13 to 16, have the oxidation state two units less than the group oxidation state. For example, in case of 13th group, the group oxidation state is 3 because outer electronic configuration is NS2 NP1, so 2 plus 1, it is a plus 3. Similarly, in case of 14th group, group oxidation state is plus 4 and so on. In case of a last element that is thallium, it is having the oxidation state plus 1 that is 2 units less than the group oxidation state plus 3 and in case of lead, the oxidation state is plus 2 which is again 2 units less than the plus 4 and similarly in case of 15th and 16th group elements. Now let us try to understand this by taking the example of first and last element of group 13. So whenever in the chemistry you have to understand the, the chemistry of any chemical property of any element then you should write down the electronic configuration of that element. For example, here the boron is having electronic configuration here written is 1s to 2s to 2p1 for thallium. It is in on and all this configuration is written. So the outer electronic configuration in case of boron, it is this. So in case of this, 2 plus 1, 3 electrons can be used in bonding forming the boron in a plus 3 oxidation state. In case of thallium, only this electron participates in the chemical bonding to give thallium in plus 1 oxidation state. These electrons, S electrons, these do not take part in chemical bonding and these act as an inert pair. Now our today's point is to understand why these S electrons act as an inert pair. So, First of all, if you will see that uh, in the electronic configuration of boron and thallium, in the thallium there is presence of uh, D and F electrons of transition elements and inner transition elements which is absent in case of uh, boron. And these D and F orbitals, they are having very poor screening effect. So this screening effect we will be able to understand in this way. Suppose we are having this nucleus with the Z positive charge and here there are the shells where the electrons are revolving around the nucleus. Suppose these are the electrons which are revolving around. Now what happens is nucleus being positively charged and electrons being negatively charged, nucleus will attract the electrons towards itself. But on the other hand, there are the electrons which are present in inner shells also, which are negatively charged, and these will repel these electrons. The inner electrons which are present in the inner shells, they will protect the outer electron from the nucleus because now they are opposing the effect of nucleus these electrons which are present inside these are opposing the effect of nucleus why because this nucleus is attracting the electrons toward itself and these electrons which are there they are repelling each other and so this is opposing the effect of nucleus so that is why the overall effect of nucleus for these electrons get reduced this is because of presence of inner electrons. In the other words, you can also say that these electrons will screen the outer electrons from the effect of nucleus. So the effective nuclear charge for these electrons will get decreased. So, but this screening effect, it is maximum in case of S orbitals and it goes on decreasing as we move from the S to F orbitals. 
so it is maximum in case of s and then it keep on uh, decreasing so we have seen that in case of d and f orbitals the screening effect is very less so which are present here in case of thallium so these d and f electrons these will not protect the outer electrons much from the effect of nucleus so overall what will happen that these electrons will be drawn much towards the nucleus and these electrons will be very much uh, tightly held so when these electrons will be very much tightly held then the ionization energy will increase and when ionization energy increases then we know that it is very difficult to remove electron or these electrons 6s2 electrons will prefer to remain as a inert pair in other words you can also say that suppose if thallium gives an electron then what happens then it will acquire the positive charge it will become cation now cations are having small size as compared to the neutral atom so suppose this electron is being removed from here then overall again the effective nuclear charge for the remaining electrons will increase because the same nuclear charge is attracting the less electronic charge so that is why ionization energy will increase more okay so these electrons will be again more tightly held and these will remain inert and this will not take part in chemical bonding okay in other way we can also understand this by looking at the energy levels of boron and thallium so in case of boron the valence shell these sub levels this s and p they are having the energy difference which is very less okay but in case of thallium the difference between the 6s and 6p orbitals is very much so because of small difference in energy these s electrons of boron can be promoted to the higher orbital resulting in the further hybridization of three orbitals to form sp2 hybridized orbitals with one electron each and uh, one unhybridized orbital okay so there can be the formation of uh, boron tri chloride okay but in case of thallium as we have seen it is clear before us that the energy difference is very more, very high so that is why the promotion of electrons from s to p is very difficult because it requires a lot of energy okay so that is why these electrons again they will prefer to remain inert and they will remain as such okay so only one electron in thallium will take part in chemical bonding so the in another way we can also understand this that in case of thallium compound the bond strength is very less in thallium compounds because we know that as we are moving down the group size will keep on increasing and when size keep on increasing the overlap between the orbitals between the valence orbitals of two bonded atom will keep on decreasing and when overlap between the bonded atoms keep on decreasing the bond strength will also decrease because bond length will get to increase so this we can understood as suppose we are having boron atom here and here there are the chlorine atoms which are attached with the boron and here this is thallium the bigger atom and here there are the chlorine atoms which are attached around the thallium now these are the smaller atoms so the bond length will be small and here this is bigger atom overlapping will be less and the bond length will be more when bond length is small so it will be strong and this being longer in length it will be 
weak. When this bond is strong, so ultimately in the formation of the boron and chlorine bond, lot of energy would have been released and this release of energy is sufficient for the promotion of this 2s electrons to 2p orbitals. But in case of thallium, the very less energy is released. So that is why this energy is not sufficient to compensate for the promotion of electrons from the s orbital to the p orbital. So that is why the, these electrons will remain inert and this pair is an uh, inert pair and uh, this reluctance of uh, s electrons to take part in chemical bonding is known as inert pair effect. So now from today's discussion we have learned that the uh, boron in the plus 3 oxidation state forms compound for example boron trichloride and the thallium in the plus 3 oxidation state it is very difficult to form compounds for example if this thallic chloride is formed this is very much unstable and this thallic chloride will decompose to form thallous chloride and chlorine. This thallic chloride will liberate chlorine that is why it is also acting as a oxidizing agent. So as we move down the group inert pair effect keep on increasing. It rather it starts at the middle but it is maximum at the bottom. Similarly, with the help of this, we can explain the inert pair effect in 14, 15, and 16 group elements also. Okay, friends, that's all for today. Thank you.